not the last match. It is currently 4-2 in the favor of Axiom. This puts Mouse Sports on match point. And we'll see if the resurrected Vortex can bring it back or not. But however, spawning in the lower left corner of Derelict Watcher with some epic StarCraft 2 music for this intro. It is the player from Axiom, Crank. And his opponent looked like he was going to build the momentum for Mouse Sports. Taken down in the last game, but back from the grave. Trying to bring his team to victory. Currently sitting at 2-4 in this series. In the red trunks. The Zerg player. It is Vortex. Crank coming across with that probe pretty darn early. But of course that forge is most likely going to be used defensively. I wouldn't expect cannons on a map like Derelict. It's a little bit hard to utilize him. The mineral line's just not in the favor for it. You can try and get it behind the gases, but again, it's not the easiest thing to do. Coming to the main, though, just gonna get that quick scout, make sure there's no early pool. Love this move out of Crank, though, to scout so early. Because it would be typical to go for something like a 10 pool, right? To get, like, that early 13 pool with gas out in order to try and deal with Crank's, uh, sort of return him the favor, you know, of last game. Yeah, that's, that's the only thing he's got on his mind right now is revenge. Vengeance. He's gotta channel his inner Kerrigan. And lead his swarm hosts to victory here. Swarm host may not be a bad choice, but I don't know if that would help you against those big all ins. But he's really got to get the scouting a little bit better. This game does vortex. I don't know if he was fully prepared for what Crank was ha handing out there with that eight gate pressure. Um, but we saw such smooth transitions for vortex in the game before. Whoa. You know, saw that little double drone bump. Chest double bump. drone bow all the yeah. way. Gonna try and kill the pro, but uh, yeah, so Crank will secure himself the hatchery here without too much issue. A little bit annoying, or sorry, not Crank, sorry, Vortex will secure the hatchery. A little bit annoying, but Crank gets that pro out alive, steals five minerals, and gets on home. But this is, uh, I don't know, this is a tough spot for Vortex to be in. It's not just that he's coming up against a great Protoss Titan like Crank. It's the fact that he just came off of a loss, right? Like, you're either empowered by that, and you're full of, like, vim and vigor and, like, vengeance, or you're going to be a little bit paranoid, and I don't think paranoia is going to be the way to play this game against Crank. No, you want to play confident. You want to be dictating the pace of the game with your own decisions rather than reacting to your opponent's decision. I know, you know, from a perspective of Zergs, it is somewhat opportune sometimes to just play more defensively, but Crank, oh, he's wearing daddy pants this game, Ripken. He has thrown that pylon down at the third, going to delay Vortex's third even longer here. Yeah, a little bit annoying, and he's probably not going to let this complete, but the probe stays alive. Uh, middle of the map passes past another leg, and now the cannon's up at home, so Vortex has to be careful. And let's the pylon complete, too, so saying, I'm going to take time over minerals here. Hey, if it buys you enough on that third, maybe it's worthwhile. Vortex certainly not going to be happy about this, but uh, this probe is not going to die trying to get back home. Lings might, yeah, some good control to Vortex pulls it back. But I don't know, I'm just thinking, like, what can Vortex really do? We saw the way Crank played last game as a bit of an all-in, so it's kind of hard to predict the playstyle he'll try and execute in Derelict. I think a lot of that played into the fact that he was just planning to catch Vortex off guard, which he absolutely did. Uh, Vortex this time, obviously going to be prepared for anything. That early third hatchery going to give him the economy needs, not, to, not only the economy, but the production. Will he have the right composition this time? I mean, what can you really do beyond... Lings and Roaches to defend. I mean, you, I guess you can add up some spine crawlers to the mix. You know, it doesn't really feel the presence of the queens there, but I think really getting into the main base was one of, you know, Crank's ways of getting into Vortex's head and making him think and divert most of his attention to that attack that happened there. It, things could have happened anywhere else on the field too at the same time, but it was that that main focal point bringing Vortex to just say, okay, I always need to be perpetually defending my main. That kind of may have just brought him into that defensive mode. You know, Vortex was playing reactionary, had only on 55 drones, was diverting a lot of his units in, or a lot of his larvae into those units. But I don't know, man. I, I don't know if he can change the composition up. I think he's just got to he's just got to see what's going on a little bit better. And he's doing a good job of that with these lings on the other side of the map. Yeah, we'll play with the control is kind of cool. He's he's constantly been almost baited into that cannon several times. This one ling, of course, with seven health, pokes away at the zealot, but gets away alive. Probe picked off as he tried to poke into the third, so that was first blood. The pylon, of course, doesn't count for people who like to argue that buildings should be first blood. I disagree. But Vortex, I don't know. Roach Warden now coming in. The layer time is not going to be quick, is the downside. So speed's going to be a little bit delayed. It's not like he's rushing this out. It's not like he's going to try and hit with an all-in, but right now, uh, he's got the overload in the natural. Does he scout much? 
No, he sees nothing in the main. He sees almost nothing in the natural. And he might not even see these extra gateways coming down. But three gates off of two bases, that's nothing crazy. That's nothing out of the ordinary. But Crank looks like he's... Well, with a plus one, it's going to be a question of whether it's timing or not. If we see a couple more gateways coming down, he might go for an attack. But only three for now with plus one. That's just that's just tech, man. That's just playing it safe. Well, fortunately for Vortex, he's getting his scouting information even better in the middle of the field here where he sees the pylon. He sees this sneaky probe. And he may be able to t head off any attacks that are, that are potentially coming here before they ever even start. That's one thing I gotta give Vortex a lot of credit for. Regardless of the fact that he did just go down, every series he's played, versus Alicia, versus Cranky, even last game, he's been on top of the pylons. He's not really let those catch him off guard at any point. And it's really annoying as a Protoss player when you want to get those proxy pylons down, but you just can't establish anything. So getting up to lair here is going to be crucial for Vortex to try to get his upgrades up I know, on those roaches that are coming out on the field as well. Crank, meanwhile, is going to go for ground armor level 1 in this situation. Got four gateways done in the natural. No, no additional ones being added on just quite yet, though. And taking that third base, so not going to be an all-in this game. Perhaps something more uh, focused off of three bases, and I like that for... Uh, for this map here because you know, it's gonna be tough for the, for the Zerg to get that, establish that fourth base to the north eventually. But uh oh, Rifkin, Link Speed kicking in here for these Lings. It may force to cancel on the third base and change the plans of, of Crank completely because there are more and more Lings actually flooding across the field in the meantime. This looks like it's gonna be a big concerted push from Vortex coming up. Yeah, the next is cancel the piles will be picked off, but behind this Crank throwing down a Starport, or sorry, Stargate. I'm curious what he's going to try and make out of this, because we already have the Hydro Den on the way. Like, whatever he comes out of this is not going to be that effective going to Vortex's build, which will be that primarily of Roach Hydralisk. I mean, you can try to go for an Oracle for something cheeky, maybe try and catch Vortex off guard, but I mean, realistically, it's too late for Phoenixes, right? Void Race could be added in for a little extra pizzazz, but I feel this Stargate's a little bit useless for the time being. More precautionary in case Vortex was going for, like, something, I don't know, air? But no, it's going to be Void Ray, okay. It's just going to add additional firepower in the composition, but Hydras are going to wreck those. They're the glass chandeliers for a reason, because if the Hydras get underneath them, they're just going to go poof. Did you see the Carbot with the Void Ray, by the way? Yeah, man, they, he made that explosion oh, look so good. But awesome. Well, the reality is, if you, I guess if you have enough Void Rays out with triple Stargate production, you can actually deal with Hydralisks. Hydralisks one for one, the Void Rays actually tend to win a lot of the time. The Hydralisk damage is great, but because, as Doom stated, they're glass cannons, they also go down very quickly. They're both, the Void Ray and the Hydralisk are like some of the highest rate of fire units in the game. So it's a bit of an awkward trade. A Guardian Shield, a Force Field here there, but, ooh, Vortex actually saw those extra Stargates coming in. And this is gonna get a thing that's gotta trigger attack, but I don't know if he can actually get in here without the Hydralisk on the other side of the field. You know, we don't have muscular augments done, so they're not gonna have the additional speed. You know, through spines is just now no, finishing Void up. Rays. Void Ray gonna be pesting away at the roaches. Yeah, prismatic alignment, of course, makes you do bonus versus roaches, bonus versus armored, and two of them pop pretty quickly. Uh, the downside is, okay, so by Crank going for this massive air composition, uh -oh. it actually gets defeated by Infestors fairly easy. Yeah, I see the Mothership, of course, about to go down to these Hydralists. Yeah, they just barely can't keep up, but this third base is going to get torn down like it's nothing. Vortex could throw his army into this very easily and take it down. Yeah, Overcharge goes off as a single cannon. Hydralists are not going to be involved because they're the expensive units, and Vortex is smart enough not to waste everything, but pulls back out of this entirely. Going to push into the natural. Sentries get surrounded. The force fields go down, but perhaps it doesn't matter as he takes out every single sentry but one. Now the Hydralists are left to kind of go uncontested. Voidries are available, four of them coming out so much at a time, but again, it's not quite enough to beat out the Hydralists just yet. Yeah, but it is going to force Vortex back perhaps a little bit here. That third base still mining away, so Crank taking advantage of that as best he can. Uh, but the time is ticking away here as the Roaches and the Lings are starting to push through to the infrastructure. If the Cybercore goes down, that could be pretty deadly. That's the plus one timing that he really needs for those Void Rays to become more effective versus Hydralis. But it does, in fact, go down, and Vortex going to back up just a tad. Can he engage into this? I don't know. Another additional Photon Overcharge is going to be pushing away those units at the ramp here. Oh, he's taking out the Void Rays. Engage on top of the Void Rays. The Void Rays are going to go down so quickly. They, they, uh, they overcharge, but of course, the alignment, it, it does nothing versus Hydras. No bonus damage, and now the Roach is moving into the main. The Void Rays, the units he needs to kill them, are busy chasing the Hydras, and the Hydras are going to take out the Void Rays. And no, Crank has nothing left really going for him. His air weapons were completely shut down. He's got three gateways of some of the most expensive units in the game that he cannot produce from, and Crank is getting losses in the main left and right. Vortex has caused so much damage. How many workers killed so far? 18. The third base is going to be the only mining base for the time being. The natural base is still mining, of course, but only just barely. Once the Hydras break in, that's going to change. 
They have muscular augments done, so now the rally is much better for Vortex in the situation and pecking away back at these gateways. You know, Crank doesn't really have anything besides these Stargates in the back here, and they're building so slow. He's forced to use Chrono Boost on them and try to get them out, but it doesn't even have no charge. Work, even if it gets them through. These Zealots have no charge. They can't connect to any of this. The Void Race, the probes. This is actually the timing of this is quite nice for Crank, but I don't know if it'll be enough. The probes are being retreated back immediately. There's three Void Race, but way too many Hydralisks. Oh, he actually pulls it back. Those alive. Yeah, 3 HP for the win. 42 on the other as he keeps them alive. So necessary for a further up, or a follow up. But Vortex continuing to press in, continuing to rally units across the map. It's looking like Brood War with all these Hydralists here, Doom. Like carnage in the Protoss player's base. Now all the gateways in the front, only two remaining. Each board going to pop as soon as it comes out here. And, oh, GG. Good game. Right, Vortex getting revenge. Vortex will do it, yeah. Three to four now, bringing it ever closer. But they're not out of the, they're not out of the woods yet, Doom. They still got another couple games they got to go through. Very impressive. And you guys who are in chat with us today, first off, thank you for tuning in. Thank you for all the new followers, not just on Twitter, but also on Twitch. Follow that channel if you want to see more StarCraft in the future. But again, we're not done yet. If you're in chat, we got 98 people participating in the vote. A very split decision. 51% of you voting for Mouse Sports, the other 49 voting for Axiom. You can type right. exclamation mark vote and the team name to let us know. Where your, uh, where your heart lies, I suppose. Where your predictions are going to be. But we're going to throw out some ads. And we will see who the next player for Axiom will be. Don't go anywhere. We'll be back in two minutes. Thank you for the glasses, Doom. There you go.